Hi guys, today we're going to draw this lovely image of the toilet paper and it's on a different image than the one where we drew out our roller. So you're going to switch to the one that looks like this and in the lower right hand corner is the toilet paper. I divided this image in half and today I'm using my actual sketchbook page. It's okay if you have a piece of paper. Um, and if you don't have access to a ruler to create your vertical and horizontal line, um, go ahead and just estimate your halfway points. It's mainly crucial that you have that middle intersection of the lines so that you can proportionally enlarge the toilet paper roll. Five and a half was my halfway point. Four and a quarter was my halfway point the vertical way. You guys know this by now. So definitely line up some straight edge to divide the image. If you have a screenshot of it on your phone, that's fine as well. Um, let's go ahead and get started with our outline. It's pretty proportionally divided on the page. So I kind of know, okay, how much space I have above the vertical and above the horizontal, excuse me, I'm gonna have that much below as well so that it fills the page. So I'm thinking about, okay, maybe the bottom's here, the top could be around here, and then each side seems to kind of curve a little bit inwards. And this one where it's kind of unraveling, not sure exactly where it's going to go yet. Um, I want to make the top shape, which is a squished down oval kind of ellipse shape. And sometimes I have to make this curve a couple times to get it right or turn my paper around. It's more comfortable making like a C shape, right? Depending on if you're right or left handed. So that's pretty good. Now centering, I want to make that toilet paper roll kind of following that same curve as the ellipse. And I want to double check that my bottom curve is curving nicely as well. Now I'm ready to go over here and let this kind of peel away in the back. And as it wraps over here, I'm thinking about how much space I need in there to show the depth. And then it kind of goes at a slant, then straight down. Now this edge has some holes and wrinkles and I'm kind of just roughly sketching that in. When we're doing ink, it's so nice that you can erase afterwards, but if you're using something, you wanna double check if it smudges or not. Ballpoint pen can smudge. So definitely double check. So over here, I need to go and add this little triangle shape where it's folding over and it's really light, but I know that's what it's doing because of the shadow happening there. That's kind of jaggedy. I'll go back and make an adjustment. Make sure it's all how I want and I'll go ahead and erase my vertical and horizontal line. And with my pencil, I also want to sketch in the shadows so I don't forget, okay, this kind of comes out that way. I know it's going to fade over here just a little bit. And any other lines that we didn't want, I might want to keep a few of those actually because there's some textures of the side. All the layers of toilet paper really close together. So I'm going to make a few sketch lines there so I remember to add ink in these areas. Pretty good. Now I need the shadow going off to the left side. Remember shadows on a cylinder are like an ellipse, but you only see the left side. Make this line a little clearer. And it's not gonna be a perfectly straight line. That's why I didn't use any ruler at all. I need to open this a little more. 
Okay, so I think I'm ready to use my pen and I'm gonna use an O5 pen just like you might have from class. If you have it a lower size, that's good, but don't go bigger than an O5 because that'll be really quick. So I want you guys to do this in stippling and I'm always gonna go for the edges that I need to make a little darker. So I can quickly go through and line things up with my pen so that I can get rid of all my pencil lines. So down here, I needed to draw in those little wrinkles. I forgot about them. So these little white highlights that are happening at the bottom, showing like this was in the cupboard for a long time and then had to dig to the back for this one because we all ran out of toilet paper, right? No, we didn't. Well, I didn't, I'm lucky. Okay. So I'm gonna mark where the dark areas start here. So I'm always kind of keeping things in line before I get rid of the pencil line. The bottom edge, I know it's gonna be a lot darker. Remember, we're wanting to think about where is our light source coming from? It's definitely coming from the right side and casting shadows to the left. So we need to keep that consistent and make sure the right side is the lighter side. There is a little bit of texture happening over here, but don't overdo it. Just give yourself a little bit to start with. I like to kind of layer things and work my way around. Make sure you think about the outside shape of your ellipse. You can use your dot textures, your stippling, your pointillism, and create a line by keeping them in a row. It might be helpful to make even more lines going. And then the way that I'm trying to make it look a little bit like paper texture is making these kind of vertical lines. I could even make it a cross hatch, go over it, let it kind of bow out. If I make like a row of lines going this way. It would be really fun to also look at your own toilet paper and think about what type of pattern is on your toilet paper. Ooh, this one has butterflies. That'd be really cute. So I'm just gonna make mine with a line texture happening out of the stippling. Thinking about my shadows, I know inside of the toilet paper roll, it needs a lot of value in these areas where there's a layer in front of another, I wanna keep these little highlights. So I'm gonna mark around them with my dots and then fade down where there's a shadow. How do you fade and make gradation with dots? It's just about clustering where it's really dark and then fading away, you would let them be further apart. And remember, it's important to put your head back from the composition or hold it out in front of you at arm's length to think about, okay, are all of my values consistent? I wanna make sure my darkest dark is matching in the shadows here. I can't have the whole lot darker than the shadow would be. So if you're not Working with a micron pen, you really need to use whatever you have handy to make some nice textures. Maybe you want to use your gel pens. Ooh, this is kind of cute. I could mix colors in here. This is just a green gel pen and I have to be more careful when I'm doing the stippling with the green gel pen because it's gonna smudge. If I blow on it, I wanna double check. This is gonna smear. Hey, not too bad. But as you're going through and marking things, go and erase the pencil edge so you can kind of keep track of how many you have left and you don't forget something, forget replacing it with pen. 
stay consistent, think about value, proportion, right? I can't have a huge um, middle hole compared to the outside. Didn't want it to be too tall because then it would look more like paper towel roll. So think about those things. Um, get help from your teacher, ask questions, and of course, um, do your best be creative. Um, thank you for watching. This is going to be actually an example. I forgot to show you almost. So I'll let this freeze here for the end moment. Hopefully you guys have a printer so that you can follow along. Pause as needed. Rewind. Thank you very much.